China is shooting for the moon. The country plans to put its own astronauts on the moon by 2030. The Chinese government says its lunar ambitions have now been kick-started as it races to meet the goal. The world is evolving before our eyes as new technologies allow us to peer into previously hidden realms. During the height of the Cold War, the Soviet Union and the United States competed with each other in virtually every industry, but space was the ultimate arena for showcasing scientific superiority. When the Soviet Union sent the first artificial satellite into Earth's orbit, the United States responded by landing the first human being on the moon. However, as the Soviet Union collapsed, the United States made significant advances into the final frontier of space. To date, only a select few countries have made significant progress in this area, with the United States being the absolute pinnacle of success. However, China as a global power appears to be on the rise, as seen by its remarkable recent space exploits. What is going on? Why is China racing to become a space superpower? Come along as we take you through China's recent advanced space developments that will change everything. There is a wide range of benefits associated with expanding human spaceflight. Satellites improve communication for both military and civilian uses. Human spaceflight not only provides an opportunity for cutting-edge research, but also gains international prestige. Many medical, environmental, and technical issues on Earth have been alleviated because of discoveries made possible by space experiments. The newest attempt by Beijing to establish itself as a major space power is a research and training center for aspiring astronauts. SeaSpace, a private Chinese firm, constructed Mars Base One, which resembles a space station, but is really located on Earth and includes a functioning airlock, greenhouse, gymnasium, residential rooms, and a control room. China is contemplating a trip to Mars next year, so solar-powered buggies and lunar probes are currently exploring the red dust terrain of northwestern Gansu province, which bears a striking resemblance to the red planet. From growing vegetables in soilless scientific labs under UV light to stumbling around in heavy spacesuits, visitors get a taste of what it's like to be on a real space trip. Instead of raising animals for food, barley worms are cultivated for their protein content. Perhaps it was inevitable that the celestial empire would expand into space. The Space Foundation, an American nonprofit, reports that China spends $8 billion a year on space exploration, second only to the United States. Chinese scientists developed the first crewed rockets in the year 900, but it wasn't until 1970, riding on the shoulders of Soviet technology, that they launched their first Long March rocket and sent a human into space in 2003. It's moving quite quickly now. China made history not too long ago when it successfully landed its Chang'e 4 lunar lander on the moon's far side, which is always obscured from Earth due to the moon's synchronous, tidally locked spin. There, the Jade Rabbit 2 rover from China successfully established radio contact with a satellite orbiting the moon. The Chang'e 4, named after China's legendary moon goddess, also achieved another first when it successfully germinated a cotton seed. After the operation was complete, Chinese President Xi Jinping lauded the outstanding feats that had served as an example for the entire Chinese Communist Party, the entire Chinese armed forces, and the people of all ethnic groups in China. This kind of support from the very top shows just how big China wants to go. Currently, China is home to the world's largest filled aperture radio telescope, which spans a distance of about 1,640 feet. China has ambitious aspirations for space exploration, including missions to Mars, asteroids, Jupiter, and perhaps Uranus. Within the next decade, it also plans to construct its own high-tech, large-scale space station and a research outpost in the Moon's south polar zone. The deployment of satellites is also a top goal. As part of its effort to catch up to the West's satellite infrastructure, China had the most launches in 2019 with 38. The following month, China successfully launched a rocket from a mobile platform in the Yellow Sea, delivering seven satellites into orbit, five commercial spacecraft, and two carrying experimental technology. China is now only the third nation in the world to master sea launches, after the United States and Russia. The Beijing government sees space as crucial to the growth of the economy, the promotion of high-end industry, and the development of spillover technologies, as seen by the rapidity with which China is overcoming each technological hurdle. 
They consider space to be a critical factor in future development and competitiveness. However, China plans to increase its ability to innovate in the scientific and technological fields by constructing a massive modular space station. Missions to the Moon and Mars are long-term aspirations of the Chinese government, and they hope that research undertaken aboard the Chinese space station, CSS, will help them get there. The space programs of more than 80 countries include everything from the creation of dual-use satellites to the exploration of the Moon. Only three of these countries have transported humans into space without any outside help. Human spaceflight was accomplished in 1961 by the United States and the Soviet Union amid the backdrop of the Cold War space race. In 2003, China sent Lieutenant Colonel Yang Liwei into space on the Shenzhou 5, also known as the Divine Ship 5, making China the newest member of this select group. In 21.5 hours, Yang completed 14 orbits of the Earth. Project 921, China's human space program, began in earnest in that year. Human spaceflight and the creation and operation of what Wu Ping, then Deputy Director of China's Manned Space Agency, CMS, referred to as a permanent manned Chinese space station, are two of the primary goals of the multi-stage Project 921. The Tiangong, Heavenly Palace space labs were built as part of Project 921 and served as crucial test beds for perfecting the skills necessary to run the CSS. Launched in September 2011, the 8.5 metric ton Tiangong-1 allowed Chinese astronauts, known as Taikonauts, to train for spacewalks and conduct docking and rendezvous maneuvers. After China lost contact with its space module in March 2016, the Tiangong-1 crashed into Earth's atmosphere on April 2, 2018, sending debris flying over the South Pacific. As a follow-up to the successful Tiangong-1 mission, Chinese engineers worked to refine the design of the Tiangong-2, which was launched in September 2016. Wu Ping referred to the Tiangong-2 as a laboratory in the truest sense of the word due to its increased potential for scientific testing. China's white paper on space operations from 2016 claims that the Tiangong-2 provided the country with the opportunity to develop expertise in areas like cargo delivery and replenishment, which are essential to the successful operation of a long-term space station. In late 2016, the module played host to the two-person Shenzhou 11 crew for 30 days thanks to upgrades to the living quarters and life support systems. This was China's longest manned spaceflight ever. In July of 2019, China successfully deorbited the Tiangong-2. A third Tiangong space lab was supposed to be built, with the capacity to house three Taikonauts for 40-day stays. However, the project was scrapped in favor of developing a more modern space station. Then, on October 31st of last year, China successfully launched the final component of its brand new Tiangong space station. With the addition of the 18-meter Mengtian lab module, the name means Dreaming of the Heavens, the station can now house up to six people permanently. Currently, it is home to three astronauts, including Commander Chen Dong. It's a big deal for China's fast-expanding space program, which hopes to one day construct a lunar outpost, send out a lunar rover, and launch new Mars rovers and landers. It's also the ISS's first permanent neighbor since Russia's Mir station was deorbited in 2001. For China's space program, this is a big deal. The lifespan of the ISS is rapidly approaching its end. We might be left with just one space station in orbit, China's. The Chinese space agency hopes Tiangong will last for 10-15 years at the very least. With the mission extension announced by the Biden administration last year, the International Space Station, ISS, which is jointly administered by the United States, the European Space Agency, ESA, Russia, and other partners, may be abandoned as early as 2030. Due to the continued geopolitical tensions that followed Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Russia threatened to withdraw before 2024. But now, space experts believe Russia will maintain its backing until 2030. The United States and its allies, including Europe, Canada, and Japan, as well as Russia, whose space program has recently been in decline, have dominated humankind's history of space exploration and crewed spaceflight. China has done what the US and Russia took decades to do, and it has done it faster, on its own, and with enhancements over earlier designs. Tiangong was built in China in only one and a half years, despite the fact that planning for the station began in 2011 and included the launch of the first of two test versions. 
The Tianhe core module lifted off in April 2021, and the first astronauts moved in in June of that year. The final was posted in July 2022, followed by the following module. The T-shaped station, consisting of a central core and two lab modules, is roughly the same size as Mir, a revolutionary space station that was in operation in the 1980s and 1990s. But Jan Osberg, an aerospace engineer at the RAND Corporation, adds that while being smaller than the ISS, on the inside they have some creature comfort features that improve habitability and therefore astronaut productivity, less clutter, more wireless rather than cabling, and a microwave in space. Even though the size of the station is unlikely to increase, Osberg thinks that a robotic telescope could be added in the future as part of the space program. Tiangong's T-form, along with other factors like the necessity to monitor power usage and eliminate waste heat, may restrict expansion possibilities. The International Space Station ISS, which includes truss construction and massive solar arrays, experienced many expansions over the course of many years and dozens of missions. China's Tiangong Station, like the International Space Station, will allow for international collaboration allowing for the shipment of experiments and eventually manned missions from other countries. It now features an experiment from Saudi Arabia, and academics from European institutions and beyond have suggested experiments on anything from gamma-ray bursts to space medicine to atomic clocks. Cargo missions could be launched by commercial partners in China. According to Marissa Heron, a space policy researcher at RAND and a colleague of Osberg's, China has different priorities for Tiangong than the ISS, which is dependent on the cooperation and support of its partners on an ongoing basis. Their primary goal will probably be to demonstrate Chinese leadership and independence from foreign space agencies and enterprises. In other words, NASA won't be joining them. The so-called Wolf Amendment, passed by Congress in 2011, forbids agency cooperation. It inhibits the United States government from cooperating with Chinese businesses and organizations on fears for national security. During the Cold War, NASA and its Soviet equivalents occasionally collaborated despite political differences. Thus, this is a radical shift from previous practice. NASA is putting money into three different concepts for private space stations that might take off as soon as the late 2020s and eventually replace the ISS. In the meantime, Commercial firm Axiom Space is working on an ISS module. As part of the Artemis moon mission, NASA and its partners hope to construct a gateway lunar space station by the end of this decade. When it comes to Tiangong, Russia isn't likely to play a significant role. Earlier this year, the president of the Russian space agency, Roscosmos, indicated that by 2028, the agency planned to launch modules for its own new station. The successful completion of Tiangong proves that China is now one of the few global powers in space. And now China faces an issue that other superpowers have had to face for some time. How to dispose of the waste produced by operating a space station? Most nations either manufacture rockets specifically designed to be reused or attempt to dispose of used rockets by keeping enough fuel on board to allow for a safe atmospheric landing. In this way, they are prevented from either remaining in low Earth orbit where they could pose a threat to satellites and space stations, or falling back to Earth uncontrollably. China's space program utilized the Long March rocket to launch station modules, but the last two stages failed. The rocket that carried the Wentian lab module into orbit in July shattered into fragments two weeks later, with some of the debris landing in Malaysia and Indonesia, while the rest plunged into the Indian Ocean near the Maldives. Brian Whedon, Director of Program Planning at the Secure World Foundation in Broomfield, Colorado, says that with this booster, China chose not to have the ability to bring the upper stage down in a controlled way, which pretty much every other advanced spacefaring nation does at this point. Even though China is a signatory to the UN Liability Convention and so responsible for any harm the rocket may cause, Whedon claims that international law does not require responsible action. Expert in national security concerns at the Naval War College in Newport, Rhode Island, David Burbach, believes that while China, the United States, and Russia all have major space military capabilities, the space station doesn't contribute to those. Tiangong, like the ISS and Mir, is not meant for military use and is instead meant to advance scientific inquiry. A U.S. satellite may be captured by the station's grappling arm in principle. 
Instead of trying to move your massive space station, it would be much smarter to develop a small stealthy satellite, argues Burbach. Osberg believes that the completion of Tiangong will have other geopolitical effects on the United States. We can't assume that we're the only game in town anymore, he says. This is a wake-up call for the United States and its allies. Managing a space station and conducting space travel can be done in numerous ways. Instead of an authoritarian dictatorship like China, I'd rather it be us who set the tone for humanity's expansion into space. Unfortunately, nothing goes well in space. Naturally, issues are not unusual on the front edge. China's commercial space industry faces fewer obstacles but has greater potential payoffs. Numerous private companies are venturing into satellite launches and other potentially lucrative areas of space exploration. Since only launches at military locations are legal in China, private companies need to coordinate with the government and get permission before they may launch. Independent development of liquid-fueled engines which are reusable and so more cost-effective than simpler solid-fuel alternatives is now possible in China thanks to a private enterprise following in the footsteps of the United States and Russia. Firms backed by celebrity entrepreneurs like Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin, Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic, and Elon Musk's SpaceX have transformed the commercial space industry in recent years. SpaceX alone holds about 65% of the entire $3 billion global satellite launch market in 2018. With companies like Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic contemplating growth into space travel, the number of satellites in orbit has climbed by 50% from 2013 to 2017, according to a report from the Satellite Industry Association reported by Bloomberg. Developing a commercial space sector was first stated by China's State Council in 2014, when it promised to encourage private capital's participation in China's construction of civilian space infrastructure. Since then, collaboration between the military and the civilian sector has expanded, and private companies have been given access to operate out of military facilities. As the ultimate disruptor, China may well achieve in commercial space what it has already accomplished in manufacturing, slash costs, increase efficiency, and rush to the front of the pack. Euroconsult, a space industry consulting group, predicts that by 2027, the market for launching small satellites, those weighing less than 220 pounds, will have grown to $15 billion. A Beijing-based startup called iSpace is trying to cash in on this trend by releasing a third product in the near future. The company's CEO, Jing Chi Kai, is a veteran of China's state-run space sector, as are the majority of his or her $500 million workforce. She is confident in the capabilities of China's commercial space industry. For Kai, there is no country in the world that can do things as fast as in China. However, the International Traffic in Arms Regulations ITAR laws prevent Chinese commercial space enterprises from competing since they forbid the launch of satellites containing American components. China's turnkey options include the construction of U.S. component-free satellites, management of satellite launches, and provision of ground station assistance. The launch of communications and surveillance satellites for countries including Brazil, Venezuela, Laos, Nigeria, and Algeria has increased China's stake in the commercial sector from 5-10%, according to analysts. In addition, European satellite makers have started making ITAR-free gadgets for this very purpose. China's space exploration and commercialization efforts are likely to develop in tandem. Having previously designed escape pods for China's state-run human space program, iSpace head engineer Yi Wei finds satellite launches to be rather easy. When compared to other places, he says, here I feel no pressure at all. Next, iSpace aspires to become the leader in the space tourism industry, just like a plethora of other private Chinese companies. Jing Qi claims that her company will begin sending humans into space within the next five years, despite being years behind U.S. competitors like SpaceX. Jing Qi hopes to take her daughter on the company's first flight as soon as they do, confident that their pricing would be lower than those of their American and European rivals. China also sees its manned space station as a springboard to much greater future space accomplishments. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.